So, while talking of uh, the Poisson process, I said we have to first talk about accounting process and so, uh, we said that there should be some norms uh, for the uh, have to be followed uh, for the accounting process and so, the first one is that it should have independent increments. I should underline increment, independent increments. Okay. So, that means that the number of events that occur in disjoint intervals are independent. So, that means say for example, if you are saying that up to 8 a m you are counting the time, then uh, n 8 would be the number of events that have occurred up to time 8. And so, that n 8 will be independent of say for example, the number of events that have occurred uh, in the from between at 8 and 10 a m. So, that means n 10 minus n 8. So, both these are random variables and so, we will assume because the intervals are disjoint this is up to 8, let us say 0 to 8 and then this is from uh, 10, 8 to 10. So, the two intervals are disjoint and therefore, we expect uh, we, we want that these two ev the number of events that uh, that means, the corresponding random variables must be independent. Okay. Now, for the uh, for example, A that I see I gave you three examples of uh, counting processes. One, first one was uh, you know uh, arrivals at a post office and so example A, uh, this may be a reasonable assumption, because we may assume that people as long as the for the uh, time that the post office is open, uh, people will come in any time and so uh, people coming say between uh, say up to from uh, if it is open from 8, 8 a m, then 8 a m to 10 a m the number of arrivals and and the, uh, the random variable indicating the number of arrivals and the say between uh, 10 and 12, the arrival the random variables, two random variables giving the number of arrivals in these disjoint intervals are independent. Okay. Now, for B, which is the number of births in a particular town or a, uh, this uh, uh, number of births between time t and t plus delta t suppose we are taking will be large if n t is large. So, that means, that uh, if you are taking it over a long span, then uh, at a particular time when the uh, people, uh, population is large, then the number of births will be large. So, here uh, it will depend, that means, it does not seem reasonable that n t is independent of n t plus delta t minus n t for n t. So, uh, it will depend, see uh, this will depend on uh, the number of births uh, that occur if you are taking up to or in, in the sense that we are saying that the random variable n t and the random variable n t plus delta t minus n t uh, may not be independent. If you are okay. Now, for example, c it will be a reasonable assumption. Uh, so, this example c refer to the number of goals that are hit by a hockey player. So, here again if you uh, take the um, time span to be one season of hockey tournaments. So, during one particular season, we expect the uh, hockey player to be either uh, to have uh, continue to have a good form or not have a good form. So, if he has a good form, then he will uh, hit a uh, number of goals hit by him up to time t or up from t to uh, s t to s plus t um, should be the, uh, the two random variables should be independent. Okay. Um, so, the, the time span is important. right? If I take the time span to be 2 years, then certainly uh, it will matter, because uh, one cannot maintain a form for let us say up to 2 years or 5 years. So, the time span. So, if you restrict your time span, then c would be a reasonable assumption. For, for c, uh, the independent increment assumption would be reasonable. The other important uh, uh, assumption for counting process is uh, stationary increments. Right. Now, here what we are saying is that the number of increments uh, the that occur should depend only on the length of the interval. So, here um, for example, if you have s comma s plus t, then the length of the interval is t. So, it will not matter what value s takes uh, as long as the uh, interval length has time t, then uh, the uh, number of increments that occur during this interval uh, is just dependent on the length of the interval. Right. Now, here um, 
we can again see whether uh, the counting processes that we wrote down uh, is that uh, a, a, a reasonable assumption for all those counting processes. Uh, for example, um, for uh, A, it is not a reasonable assumption. Why? Because uh, for a post office and even so, so similarly, you can consider a bank, there may be a rush hour. If there is a rush hour, then certainly um, you cannot say that uh, th this and this are independent. Say, if that this is the rush hour, then you know that there will be more arrivals and so the random variables uh, n 8 and n uh, 10 minus n 8 would not be independent. Okay. So, um, if you have the concept of a rush hour, but if you sort of ignore the rush hour and then you uh, look at the counting process for a post office, then uh, this may be uh, assumption of stationary increments may be a reasonable assumption. Now, again for B, it may not be a reasonable assumption. In this case, some sort of pattern has been observed in the number of births. See, summer time may more babies may be born than uh, during winters. And so, uh, again, if there some pattern has been ob, uh, observed in the town that you are considering, uh, then uh, again uh, B may not be, uh, because it will not follow the assumption of stationary increments. Okay. So, uh, the uh, it will matter if your uh, time span is during summer. So, then for the same period, more uh, babies may be born uh, uh, as, as uh, opposed to the time span, if this is during winters. Okay. So, for the same length of time, uh, the two may not be, uh, uh, the number of uh, events in the interval has the same distribution for all s. So, it may be different distributions. Okay. Then again for c, it will be reasonable. Oh, here again, if we are saying that, uh, um, if the person, if the if the player, if the hockey player is in form, then uh, uh, surely uh, the number of uh, goals that he hits will depend on the length of the time that he has played. Okay, and so uh, it will have the same distribution, and will depend on the the distribution of the number of goals that he hits would be dependent on the length of the interval and not on the um, uh, when he hits. If, if I am again restricting myself to let us say one season or maybe two seasons, if, you, if, if that is considered to be reasonable that a person will continue to be in form for, for a player will be continue to be in form for one season or two seasons uh, may be sometimes. So, it depends whatever the uh, uh, way to look at it. Uh, in that case, uh, the stationarity uh, in, uh, increment assumption would be a reasonable one for C. And so, this is what I am trying to say is that you have to, uh, before you start applying a modeling a situation, uh, for example, a particular counting process, you have to see that uh, certain basic assumptions are satisfied. And in that case, you can, you know, then we will see that based on these two assumptions, we can now talk about the poison process. So, these are the two basic assumptions under which we will now formulate our uh, uh, this probabilistic model for uh, the for counting pro for the counting process and which is uh, which we will define as the poisson process so after having defined uh, a counting process now i make a definition of a poisson process so uh, what we are saying is that the counting process nt t greater than or equal to 0 is said to be a poisson process if it satisfies the following conditions so, as we said that we start the counting from time t equal to 0. So, n 0 is 0, then uh, n uh, this uh, has a independent has independent increments, which we have already said that well uh, we defined the conditions for a counting process and then we said uh, additional properties were has independent increments. Then uh, 3 is that number of events that occur in any interval of length t has Poisson distribution. See, this is the thing. So, therefore, we are saying that it will be a uh, Poisson process, the counting process will be a, a Poisson process, if it uh, the number of events that occur in any interval of length t has Poisson distribution with mean lambda t, where uh, lambda is uh, some constant positive constant. So, that means, what we are saying is that, um, because the interval of length is t time interval is of length t. So, therefore, probability of n s plus t minus n s equal to n, because what we are saying is the number of events that occur in this interval s plus t comma s uh, 
or okay, you can say that the length of the interval is t equal to n will be e raise to minus lambda t, lambda t raise to n upon n factorial and n varying from 0. So, this is your um, uh, probability for any value of n here, integer value of n. right? So, uh, now, it, since we are, uh, since this probability is only dependent on the uh, length of the time interval, that is t, it is not dependent on when the uh, counting process is started, the beginning of the interval. So, therefore, you can immediately conclude that uh, uh, the process that we have defined also has the stationary increments property. Right, which we said that uh, it does not matter, it is only the number of events that occur will depend on the length of the interval and not on when you started counting. So, uh, therefore, this would be a Poisson process, that is what our definition is. So, now let us just look at this definition and um, see um, you can, of course, the condition 1 is fine that simply says that counting begins from time t equal to 0, which we have been saying repeatedly. Then 2 can be verified from the knowledge of the process, that it has independent increments, whether this is a valid assumption or not for the process that you are trying to model, then uh, you can tell from the uh, knowledge of the process itself. Right? Now, 3 uh, says that um, uh, the number of events that occur in any interval of length t has Poisson distribution. So, it is not clear how to verify 3. I mean, this is the whole thing. I mean, if I am calling a process a Poisson process, then I am so just saying that the number of events that occur here um, follows a Poisson distribution. So, it is not clear and therefore, uh, this definition is not a very implementable decision or you know you cannot really um, verify this condition, uh, because uh, right. So, therefore, um, uh, uh, an alternate definition is needed. To, to determine whether a counting process is a Poisson process or not, we would be wanting to have a another definition, uh, which hopefully would be uh, more easily implementable or verifiable that a given counting process is uh, Poisson or not. So, uh, let us see. Uh, so, here we will say that uh, again the same mean lambda t, if it satisfies the following conditions. So, a uh, counting process is said to be uh, Poisson with mean lambda t, if it satisfies the following conditions. So, this is same as uh, uh, for the first definition n 0 is 0. Now, what we are saying here is that probability n h equal to 1, that means, in the time interval h, uh, your probability that n h is equal to only one arrival takes place or one event occurs, it should be uh, uh, in this form, that means, lambda h plus order h. Now, this of course, means that your um, uh, function here is of values uh, of a higher order than h and you say high, this is higher order of h. So, this is linear that means, the terms here would be square cube powers of h. Uh, and in other words, you can say that uh, what this means is that limit O h upon h as h goes to 0 is 0. So, therefore, you know the, this is of higher order than h uh, square cube this. For example, if you take uh, O h to be h square, then h square upon h limit of this as h goes to 0 is 0. So, this is the idea, that means higher order terms here. So, uh, this and so what we are trying to say is that you can always discretize the uh, occurrence of the events. That means, if you take, if you make the interval h small enough, then you know there will be the probability of um, an occurrence of an event is positive uh, in a uh, small interval. So, therefore, you can discretize uh, and the second one and suppose okay, this is the third condition. The second of course, is the same as that one that process has stationary and independent increments. So, these two properties we require for the counting process to uh, be able to uh, uh, to be able to uh, to be able to say that it is a Poisson process. right? So, this uh, is has to be satisfied. Now, this one uh, tells you uh, uh, that uh, the probability of the occurrence of uh, event in a small interval is, de is dependent on lambda and that you can uh, separate out the. Uh, so, in other words the uh, you know bunching of occurrences of events is not uh, permitted here. That probability n h greater than or equal to t is of order h. So, that means, when h is small, this probability is really very small of uh, two or more events occurring in a very small interval of time h. So, that is of order h and since as I have told you that this means that the uh, higher powers of h 
then linear. So, therefore, this would be um, you know uh, when h is very small, this will also be very small. So, given lambda positive, the same lambda we are saying here, when I say this, that means it is understood that lambda is greater than 0 here. Right? So, this is the alternate definition and let us now see that uh, uh, obviously, when we are saying that this also describes a Poisson process, that also describes a Poisson process, there should be, we should be able to show that the two, uh, two definitions are equivalent. Right? So, I will do it the one uh, both ways. I will first show that definition 1 implies definition 2 and then show you that definition 2 implies definition 1 and this is very interesting and ni nice simple. So, here see we start with this definition 1 says that probability n of uh, t plus s minus n s equal to n is e raise to minus lambda t and lambda t raise to n upon n factorial and n varies like this. right? Now, put s equal to 0, t equal to h, because this is for all s t and n equal to 1 in this equation. Then you obtain that probability n h equal to 1, right? because this is 0, uh, t is h, s is 0. So, n h equal to 1 uh, is given by e raise to minus lambda h, then lambda h raised to uh, n is 1 and this is it. Right? Now, just expand e raise to minus lambda h that will be 1 minus lambda h plus lambda h whole square by factorial 2 and so on multiplied by lambda h. So, when you uh, bring lambda h inside, this will be lambda h plus all terms will be of higher order, because this will be square h square, this will be h cube and so on. So, I can write it this way right? and which uh, satisfies. Oh, right? So, that means, uh, your uh, condition 3 uh, implies condition 3 here for the definition, the second definition. And similarly, um, it is also implied from here, because um, when you want to co compute this probability <coughs> n h greater than or equal to 2, this will be uh, 1 minus probability n h equal to 0 minus probability n h equal to 1. So, n h equal to 0, again since your uh, definition is saying that, when n is 0, the probability is e raise to minus lambda h, uh, that is all right, because your n is 0. So, that is e raise to minus lambda h and this is uh, probability n h equal to 1, we have just computed is uh, this thing. So, minus lambda h in order uh, minus or plus does not matter you whatever. And now, you see when you expand this, because this will be 1 minus of 1 minus lambda h plus lambda h whole square by 2 factorial minus lambda h plus O h. Right. So, then um, 1, uh, oh, so you have a minus sign here. So, this becomes plus, right, because minus and then 1 minus lambda h. So, therefore, this is 1 1 cancels out lambda h minus lambda h cancels out and you are left with something, because this is order h. So, uh, order higher than h and this is also O h. So, therefore, the whole thing is O h. So, you can see that definition 1 implies definition 2 and now we will show you that definition 2 implies definition 1 and uh, you will see that uh, this then we would most of the time be working with uh, this definition of the Poisson process. So, let us see uh, we will try to now show that definition 2 implies definition 1 and of course, when then we will talk about interarrival times later, but you see here probability n uh, t plus h. So, this I am saying is the uh, probability of n t plus h is equal to n. This is what we are saying, what we mean by this. So, this is a new notation I have started. So, p n t plus h, that means number of arrivals are n in up to time t plus h. Now, this can be uh, thought of as uh, n minus 1 arrivals up to time t and then 1 arrival uh, at uh, within the interval um, h, right? That means um, see from t plus up to t plus h, you want n arrivals or n occurrences. So up to t, if there are um, n minus one occurrences, then in the interval <coughs> time length of uh, h, you want one arrival. And uh, according to our definition two, this is the probability of <coughs> of one arrival in the in the time interval h. Le uh, length of interval is h. Right, and since uh, we are talking of uh, independent increments, so this will be product. That means I can say this plus. Uh, there is no. Uh, that means there are n arrivals up to time t, and there is no arrival in time 
uh, length h, this is what, uh, and this will be uh, probability n h equal to 0, which follows from 3 and 4. See, 3 said that uh, probability of one arrival is 1 plus, uh, is uh, lambda h plus order h, right, and probability uh, n h greater than or equal to 2 was of order uh, h. Right. Now, when you say that there is no arrival, then that means you want 1 minus probability n h, because uh, right, you want this to be. So, if you take the complement, so then n h greater than or equal to 1, would that be ok? See, if you want n h equal to 0, I, in time, uh, so that means uh, the, uh, arrivals are 1, 2 and so on in the interval h. So, 1 minus of that will be right. So, therefore, um, uh, yes. So, this would be then 1 minus lambda h minus, because this is O h and this is lambda h plus O h. So, therefore, this is what you have. So, so therefore, probability of n h equal to 0 is 1 minus lambda h minus order h. So, again independence of events, uh, incre independent increments. So, this will be p n t into this. Right. So, this is how you can describe uh, uh, n events in time up to t plus h by breaking up the event into uh, number of arrivals up to time t and then uh, n minus 1, 1 arrival in time h or n arrivals up to time t and no arrival in time n h. So, this is how we will write it down. right? And therefore, um, uh, this will be, if you simplify this expression, p n t is coming from here plus <coughs> lambda h p n minus 1 t minus p n t. Right. So, this is it plus or terms are of higher order of h. Right. Now, um, just to rewrite this, this is a p n of t plus h minus p n t divided by h. So, that will become, I have divided by h here. So, lambda times p n minus 1 t minus p n t and this is the order h upon h. Now, when you take the limit, you can immediately see that when you take the limit as h goes to 0, this will be <coughs> limit uh, as h goes to 0 of this and here uh, this will be lambda, this is independent of h and this we have seen will go to 0. Right? And order high, uh, uh, higher order of h means that this limit is going to 0. Right? So, this is what you have and then this is nothing but the derivative of uh, p n t. <coughs> so, this will be the derivative and this is equal to lambda p n minus 1 t minus p n t. Now, uh, so, this is valid for n varying home month, because you have this n minus 1 and d p 0 t upon d t is minus lambda p 0 t, because when you are looking at uh, n equal to 0, see from here, uh, then um, you do not have this, you simply have this, right. p n t, uh, because uh, I should have n equal to 0 and uh, right. So, it will be Okay, if you want me to write it down separately, see here uh, it becomes crowded. So, this will be uh, p 0 t plus h is p 0 t. So, no arrival up to time t and no arrival in the uh, time interval. So, will be 1 minus lambda h. Remember, I can ignore that term, because that will anyway go to 0. So, then this will be p 0 t plus h minus p 0 t divided by h. So, limit of this as h goes to 0. Okay, it is not legible, but you can <laughs> I am talking loudly. So, you can hear. So, this is equal to p 0 t minus into lambda. Right. So, this is therefore, this is derivative d p 0 t upon d t is equal to minus lambda p 0 t. And so, you this much uh, knowledge you, you have about the differential equations. So, here from here it follows that p 0 t is e raise to minus lambda t and so you have these two sets of uh, differential equations. So, here the solution is uh, immediate and then this is n from 1 to t. So, if you put like for example, n equal to 1, it will be d p 1 t upon d t which will be from here <coughs> minus lambda p 1 t plus lambda e raise to minus lambda t, because I am putting substituting for p 0 t. See, when n is 1, this is p 0 t, which is e raise to minus lambda t. So, therefore, this is it. Right. Now, uh, of course, there are methods to solve uh, these differential equations, not difficult, but um, what we are saying is that you, if you just uh, try p 1 t equal to lambda t e raise to minus lambda t, it will satisfy this equation. Right. Just differentiate and substitute here the two sides will be equal. 
So, um, P 1 t is a solution here and then in general the solution would be P n t you can very easily verify that uh, you know for all values of n uh, this is the solution to your general uh, differential equation that you obtained here. And this is nothing, but as I said that my definition is that uh, P n t is nothing, but probability of n t equal to n. So, n arrivals up to time t. So, therefore, you see um, all other conditions uh, remain the same in the in definition 2 and 1. This was the only thing, because we were not sure how we would go about verifying uh, in definition 1, that the number of arrivals um, in a time interval of length t will follow Poisson distribution. So, now, uh, you know using these properties, you know a probability of definition uh, of uh, a number of occurrences um, in the time interval h, uh, you know, given those uh, the third and fourth condition of definition 2, help us to uh, show that the number of probability of number of arrivals uh, um, up to time t would be follow a Poisson distribution. So, a nice way of uh, showing that and because uh, see therefore, uh, definition 2 is easier to verify we feel, because that you know to digitize and so on, you can sort of approximate uh, the condition 3, uh, actually that is the important one in definition 2. And then uh, that is probability of uh, one occurrence in uh, time interval length h is of this uh, order, that you can supposedly easily verify and there are methods to do it. So, therefore, um, most of the time we would be, but now once we have established the uh, uh, equivalence of definition 1 and 2, it does not matter whichever you feel uh, uh, needed, you can use it in your, uh, uh, you know, when you are trying to uh, analyze certain results and or obtain certain probabilities. Okay. Now, um, as I had written there, inter arrival times, we would now like to look at the uh, probability of, uh, that means the time. So, here uh, time between two occurrences, because again the occurrences are all uh, chance uh, events are unpredictable. So, we want to uh, uh, now uh, look at the, if it is possible to, uh, to, uh, de uh, to determine the distribution of these inter arrival times. Right. We have seen that probability n t equal to 0 is e raise to minus lambda t. So, no arrival from 0 to time t this is your. So, that means, uh, up to and if you define x 1 as the time of the first arrival, uh, if the time of the first arrival and then if I want to compute the probability that x 1 is greater than t, that means that there has been no arrival in the interval 0 to t. So, no arrival from 0 to t is the event that n t is 0. So, the two events are the same. That means, uh, if the first arrival has not occurred, the time for the first arrival, see x 1 is the time of the first arrival. So, if the first arrival time is greater than t, that means, in the interval 0 to t, no arrival has taken place, which implies that n t is 0. So, the two events are the same. Okay. It is just that here, I, we have defined the random variable n t and here is the random variable x 1. So, therefore, um, and this probability is e raise to minus lambda t. So, um, um, if somewhere I have written that this event can be taken as x 1 greater than or equal to t, then this is not correct, because um, you are saying that the time of the first arrival is greater than t. So, it cannot be or if you are saying that n t is 0, then this is equivalent to the event that x 1 is greater than t. It cannot be greater than or equal to t, because in the time 0 t, no arrival has taken place. So, any arrival that takes place will be after t. So, this is the important thing and therefore, 1 minus f of x 1 t. So, this is 1 minus of f x 1 t, if f is the cumulative distribution function for x 1. So, then this is equal to e raise to minus lambda t and so, f x 1 t is 1 minus e raise to minus lambda t. So, this gives you the and so, that shows you that uh, therefore, uh, your f x 1 will be lambda e raise to minus lambda t. So, if you, um, if you uh, differentiate this uh, equation on both sides, you will get uh, lambda e raise to minus lambda t. Now, this is a exponential exponential lambda. So, the distribution of x 1 is exponential lambda and therefore, the expectation is expected value of x 1 is 1 upon lambda. So, this tells you what that um, 
you know 1 upon lambda is the uh, you know the mean mean time of you know first arrival right but uh, actually uh, now if you look at x2 x2 as the elapsed time between the first and the second arrival okay that means here uh, the first arrival occurred here and the second arrival occurred here so i'm calling this as x2 so that means if this is x1 so the time of the first arrival is x1 then time of the second arrival will be x1 plus x2 because this is inter arrival time so x2 is the time between the first and the second arrival so for example so now if you look at uh, that's why i've defined here this is the elapsed time between the first and the second arrival or this occurrence, I keep calling arrival, but which is also means the occurrence. Okay. Now, if you want to look at this, probably t 2 greater than t, condition that t 1 is s. So, the first arrival took place, we are writing t 2 t 1, but here I have been writing x 1 x 2. So, it does not matter, you can make it x 1 and we can make this as x 2, because this is x 2. Okay. So, x 2. So, therefore, this will be probability n s plus t minus n s is 0, because the second arrival is not have has not taken place up to, I mean this length is not is bigger than t. So, therefore, s plus t will be this. So, n, n s plus t minus n s is 0, given t 1 is s. So, therefore, probability n s plus t minus n s 0 is e raise to minus lambda t. Okay. So, this is again, uh, so you see this will also be um, uh, 1 minus f x 2 t and therefore, you can again see that it will be exponential. So, we will continue with the, uh, you know, so that means the inter arrival times are all exponential and that you can relate it with the memory, memory, memory less property of the exponential distribution, which comes to your independent increments. So, the two things are related. In this uh, exercise 8, I will be um, going over some problems related with the, um, uh, with the limit theorems that we had done and also uh, the Poisson process that we had talked about uh, after that. Right? Okay. So, um, so, x 1 and x 2 are question 1, x 1 and x 2 are independent random variables, x 1 is binomial um, n i comma p i 1 to 2. Right? So, x 1 that means is binomial n 1 comma p and x 2 is binomial n 2 comma p. So, use m g f s to find the distribution of x 1 minus x 2 plus n 2. Okay. So, here um, you see uh, all that you have to show is, yeah. so basically uh, the, uh, these two problems are on the uh, you know m g f of the so joint density functions of random variables and then I had also introduced the concept of m g f for more than one variable. So, now here you see you can rewrite this x 1 minus x 2 plus n 2 as x 1 plus n 2 minus x 2. So, uh, since x 2 is um, uh, binomial n 2 p, your n 2 minus x 2 will become binomial n 2 1 minus p. Right? Is that clear? Because you see uh, the when you uh, consider n 2 minus x 2. So, if x 2 has r successes, then x uh, n 2 minus x 2 will have n 2 minus r successes. So, it will be, the, so therefore, the uh, for, for n 2 minus x 2, uh, the uh, successes of x 2 would be failures here and therefore, uh, your uh, you see the and the probability for a failure is 1 minus p. So, that is all. So, once you recognize that uh, you can write this as x 1 plus n 2 minus x 2, then n 2 minus x 2 is binomial um, uh, n 2 and 1 minus p. So, once you know this, then you can immediately be, and then they will be independent. So, therefore, because x 1 and x 2 are independent, so x 1 and n 2 minus x 2 are independent and therefore, you can uh, write down the uh, joint m g f. So, you should be able to do it. right? Now, question 2, x 1 and x 2 uh, form a bivariate normal random variable, I mean uh, they are bivariate uh, random normal variables with parameters mu 1, mu 2, sigma 1 square, sigma 2 square and rho. So, rho is your uh, correlation coefficient. Show using m g f s that y and z given by, so y is defined as x 1 minus mu 1 and z is defined as x minus mu 2 minus rho into sigma 2 upon sigma 1 into x 1 minus mu 1. So, uh, you have to show that these two random variables are independent and that y and z are each normal random variables. 
Okay, here the um, idea is to uh, use MGFs, but actually there is an easier way and surely uh, to, to be able to do this problem using the MGFs, uh, I leave it as a challenge and maybe when I am discussing uh, uh, you know a set of miscellaneous examples, we will revisit this, but right now uh, the way to do it is see uh, because y is x 1 minus mu 1. So, uh, this will continue to be uh, uh, normal remember because uh, x 1 minus mu 1 the mean of y will be 0 variance will be the same because by shifting the mean of a random variable the variance does not change. Uh, so, therefore, um, y is again normal with mean 0 and variance sigma 1 and similarly z uh, is also oh, this should be x 2 here. Uh, that is missing. So, x 2 minus mu 2. Hmm. So, uh, so, here again you have shifted the mean of x 2 by this quantity mu 2 plus rho into sigma 2 uh, and of course, uh, this is the whole idea when you write z like this. So, x 1 minus mu 1 upon sigma 1 okay, that is the because you are computing the. Uh, so, this is the whole idea. So, here again the mean has been shifted and therefore, z is also normal with the same variance sigma 2 and the mean would be uh, well. So, by definition of z we see that z is the random variable which is given by conditioning x 2 on x 1 and we had while computing the conditional uh, PDFs we had seen that this will also turn out to be a normally distributed random variable and you can immediately see that the mean of z that is the expected value of z is 0 because expected value of x 2 is mu 2 and expected value of x 1 is mu 1. So, when you take the expected value of z, it will turn out to be 0. Right. So, therefore, we need to compute the variance and the variance will simply be expectation of z square. So, which I have done here by writing out the expectation of the square term and then um, taking expectation inside as we can do it um, and therefore, it will turn out to be 1 minus rho square upon sigma 2 square. So, this is the variance. Now, when we want to define the covariance, uh, then it will be um, y comma covariance of y comma z. So, that will be expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 into um, x 2 minus mu 2 minus rho sigma 2 upon sigma 1 into x 1 minus mu 1. Right. And so again here we can take expectation inside. So, this will be expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 into x 2 minus mu 2 and uh, then minus rho sigma 2 upon sigma 1 expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 whole square. And uh, expectation x 1 minus mu 1 into x 2 minus mu 2 is uh, the, co uh, the correlation coefficient rho into sigma 2 sigma 1. right? because uh, expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 into x 2 minus mu 2 is the covariance and uh, so that can be written as rho into sigma 2 sigma 1. Then minus uh, rho sigma 2 upon sigma 1 into expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 whole square is uh, sigma 1 square. So, therefore, um, when you substitute that value, you turn out, turns out to be 0. So, um, uh, y and z are uncorrelated. And now, we use a result that for uh, normal, if uh, y and z are normally distributed, then uh, being uncorrelated is equivalent to their being independent. So, therefore, y and z are independent. Right. Okay. Question 3 is from an urn containing 10 identical balls numbered 0, 1 to 9, n balls are drawn with replacement. So, the we uh, draw a ball and then uh, put it back. We just notice the number. In the following, let occurrence of 0 on a draw mean that the draw yields a ball with number 0. Okay. So, a draw whenever uh, the occurrence of 0 means that you uh, draw a ball, you notice the number or you note it down somewhere. So, if it is a 0, then it is a draw means that the uh, draw yields a ball with number 0 and then we put the ball back. Right. Now, what does the weak law of large numbers assert about the occurrence of zeros in n drawings. So, the mean is 1 by 10 because uh, they are identical balls. So, uh, probability of drawing any ball is equally likely with any of the numbers 10 numbers is equally likely and therefore, uh, the weak law of large numbers will say that um, if, if S n is the number see we are uh, denoting by S n the number that uh, number of balls that showed up with number 0. 
right. So, then S n by n is the relative frequency. So, out of the n draws you have uh, S n balls have shown up with number 0. So, S n by n as n goes as becomes large will uh, converge to 0 in probability, uh, will converge to 1 by 10. The mean is 1 by 10. So, will converge to 1 by 10 in probability that is your weak law of large numbers. Okay. So, S n by n will converge to 1 by 10 uh, in probability. Now, B part is how many drawings must be made in order that with probability at least 0 0.95 the relative frequency of occurrence of zeros will be between 0 0.09 and 0 0.11. Okay. So, that means, you are wanting to know. So, S n by n is the relative frequency, you want to compute this probability that the relative frequency is between 0 0.09 and 0 0.11 and this probability should be at least 0 0.95. Right? So, therefore, uh, now again I uh, standardize the whole thing. So, this is S n by n minus 0 0.1, right? 0 0.1 is the um, expected value here and so uh, subtract 0 0.1 from either side and so this finally, because the difference is 0 0.01. So, this is what you have. Now, by Chebyshev's inequality, this number, this probability is greater than or equal to 1 minus variance of this S n by n, which is because this is now uh, uh, binomial. So, 1 by 10 into 9 by 10. So, 0 and non-zero and that is how I am treating this is. So, p q, p q into 1 by n because S n by n the variance. right? So, variance of S n is n p q and that divided by n square. So, this is 1 by n right? and so this into or uh, divided by. So, Chebyshev's inequality 0 0.01. So, so, therefore, we will compute the value of n when this is equal to 0 0.95 and for higher values of n it will be higher. right? So, therefore, now you have the equality you can now uh, uh, get an equation for n and you will get the value of n uh, for which uh, this probability would be uh, between 0 0.019 and 0 0.11. So, you can do the rest of the problem. Okay. Then part c is uh, use a central limit theorem to find the probability that among n numbers thus chosen, uh, 0 will appear uh, between n minus 3 root n by 10 and n plus 3 root n by 10. Right? So, here again you want this probability. Uh, using central limit theorem, right? n minus 3 root n by 10 less than s n less than n plus 3 root n by 10. So, then I you see n by 10 is the mean of s n. So, I write it here this and then you see the variance, variance of s n will be n into 1 by 10 into 9 by 10, right? Because s n is now uh, binomial with mean 1 by 10 and uh, uh, sorry mean n by 10 and variance n p q, right? So, this is uh, this and so under root of this will be uh, 3 root n by 10. So, 3 root n by 10. So, when you divide, so now this becomes a standard normal variate and so the central limit theorem says that uh, probability this less than or equal to, I mean for n large enough less than or equal to 1, you want to compute. Approx so, this is approximate probability which is 2 phi 1 minus 1. Right? So, phi 1 the value is given to you at the end of the problem and so you can compute this. So, this was a good use of central limit theorem. Okay. Yeah. So, now let us go to uh, problem 4. Yeah. An employee in a call center works from 8 am until 5 pm with breaks between 10 30 to 10 45 then from 12 30 to 11 30 and 14.45 to 15 hours. Assume that calls come in according to a Poisson process with expected number of calls per hour equal to 6. So, your lambda the probability that there are at most 10 calls during the breaks. So, here the whole idea is because you see it does not matter for the when the uh, arrivals when the phone calls are coming by as a Poisson process, then the inter arrival times between the phone calls are is exponential which is memory less. So, that is what you are using here. So, then what we can do is we can just add up the total break up uh, the break time which is uh, 15, 1 hour and 15. So, 1 hour 30 minutes. right? So, therefore, uh, 3 by 2 hours and uh, you want 10, uh, you want at most 10 calls during this 3 by 2 hours. So, therefore, you will have to write uh, uh, the probability. So, you sum up that means, the calls can be 0, 1, 2 up to 10. So, your um, uh, lambda is 6 into 3 by 2. Okay, 6 by uh, 6 into 3 by 2 uh, because uh, 3 by 2 hours. So, lambda t 
lambda t becomes your parameter now and within this time uh, you uh, within the time 3 by 2 hours you want uh, at most 10 calls. So, you can write down the Poisson probability. <coughs> What is the probability that first call of the day is after 8, 10 am? So, that means for 10 minutes you do not want any call. So, 0 call and therefore, um, uh, again uh, this will be. So, your time would be you have to see since your um, arrival rate is given per hour. So, you have to convert the 10 minutes to the uh, per to fraction of an hour which is 1 by 6. So, therefore, it will be e raised to minus lambda t probability that no call comes during uh, the time uh, 8 to 8 10 a m. So, that means 1 by 10 uh, 1 by 6 into 6 which becomes so e raised to minus 1 will be the probability right. Uh, actually okay, my idea is not to really give you all the answers, but just to give you hints. What is the probability that the employee can do something else for 45 minutes without being disturbed by a call. So, here again we are repeatedly using the memoryless property. So, 45 minutes can be anywhere and therefore, you want the break that means now your time is 3 by 4 hour. So, you do not want any call to come in between uh, for 3 by 4 hours and your lambda is 6. Okay. Fine. So, you can do this now. Now, um, consider a Poisson process uh, with parameter lambda. What is the conditional probability that n 1 is n given that n 3 is n? So, here again uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a good question in the sense that it will again help you to understand the Poisson processes. Do you understand why this probability does not depend on lambda? Right. So, now here you see what, do, what is it that you have to find? you have to find probability n 1 is n given that n 3 is n. Okay. So, that means that probability n 1 is n and see actually you can uh, uh, interpret this as uh, know that n 1 is n and then n 2 is 0. Yeah, because n 1 is n and n 3 is also n. So, if that means for 2 prime periods 3 minus 1 uh, there has been no arrival. right? So, therefore, this is this and then divided by probability n 3 equal to n. This is what you have. Right? Okay. And so, and you are given, you know, so your arrival rate is lambda. right? So, therefore, uh, you have to write this. right? So, n 1 is the number of uh, arrivals, uh, so the which is equal to n in time 1 period and in time 3 period also you are given that n arrivals are there. So, that means all the n arrivals have taken uh, uh, place between 0 and 1 and so there are no arrivals in the time 2, 2 units of time 0. Right? And now, if you write out this, uh, these probabilities, you see that uh, the answer will be independent of lambda and again I want you to work out the details. Okay? Then, uh, yeah, so question 5 is over. So, question 6 the jobs to be for performed on a particular machine arrive according to a Poisson input process with a mean rate of 2 per hour. Suppose that the machine breaks down and will require 1 hour to be repaired. What is the probability that the number of new jobs that will arrive dur during this time is 0, 2? So, that means essentially you are asking for. <coughs> 1 hour gap that means, the, since the machine is uh, uh, takes 1 hour to be repaired. So, then in this 1 hour you want to know uh, uh, the probability of 0 arrival, 2 arrival or 5 arrivals and this is a Poisson process and the mean rate is. Uh, so, lambda is uh, so, the, uh, the mean rate is uh, lambda which is equal to 2 right 2 per hour. So, this you can say is a simple uh, problem, but again I just want you to familiarize yourself with all these concepts and therefore, I uh, have done it. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, question 7, suppose you arrive at a single teller bank to find 4 other customers in the bank, one being served and the other 4 waiting in line. Okay. The, the statement is a little uh, this thing, because here uh, it should have said 5 people, but anyway uh, 4 refers to the uh, 4 people waiting in the queue, one is being served and you join the end of the line. So, you are the 6th person. So, if the service times are all exponential with rate mu, what is the expected time you will spend in the bank? So, therefore, uh, you see this is 6 uh, service times because 5 are already there 
and because of the memoryless property, uh, the person who is being served, uh, again the probability of its completing, uh, you know, the, so uh, whatever service time is over uh, is immaterial, right. So, therefore, six services have to be completed and therefore, um, uh, the um, uh, completion time exp uh, for the uh, sixth person is a gamma distribution with mean 6 mu. Uh, or okay, uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, six comma mu, right? Yeah, it will be gamma six comma mu. Sorry, so it will be six comma mu, and therefore um, uh, the you know what is the mean? The mean would be six by mu. I think the uh, the mean should be uh, n by n by mu, right? If, if it is gamma n comma mu. Anyway, just verify that. So, you will find out the expected waiting time of the sixth person when he joins the queue in the bank. Okay. Uh, oh, there should have been a, huh. then this eighth one. Okay. So, cars pass a certain street location according to a Poisson process with rate lambda. Okay. So, uh, certain location in the, on the street, uh, the cars are passing at the rate of lambda. And, um, a woman who wants to cross the street at that location waits until she can see that no cars will come by in the next t time units. Right? Okay, she has some idea that she is standing at this particular place and then she looks at the side and sees that you know, for quite a distance uh, she cannot see any car coming, then she will feel free to cross the street right? and that time according to her is t time units something like that. So, find the probability that her waiting time is 0. So, waiting time is 0 means that means she comes to the location and then the probability that there is no car coming for the next t units. right? So, here again uh, because your uh, 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 arrival rate is Poisson with rate lambda. So, your inter uh, arrival times are also exponential with parameter lambda and therefore, you can find out the probability that her waiting time is 0. That means, no arrival in the time uh, uh, in a time 0 to t. So, find out the Poisson probability uh, that which is e raise to minus lambda capital T, right? no arrivals and find her expected waiting time. So, now uh, you, you have this distribution e raise to minus lambda t as the uh, probability that her waiting time is 0. So, you find out her expected waiting time. So, this you can now do by yourself. To answer the second part that is what is the expected waiting time of the woman who's, uh, who waits at the um, crossing for the, uh, for the cars to come. So, um, you will have to uh, break up the, uh, you will have to compute the uh, expected value of the waiting time uh, by uh, using conditional probabilities. So, I will just write down the solution for you on the board. Okay. So, I hope uh, with all these hints and almost uh, the, uh, some of the problems have solved almost completely. So, anyway, I hope you will enjoy doing it and um, I definitely will try to uh, come up with a, a large list of uh, interesting and challenging problems at the end of the course.